Hello, welcome back to Take The Wivo. My name's Steph, and last week you may have seen, or you may not have seen, that we released our review on the Logitech G502X Lightspeed, and we looked at the 502X Plus as well. In that review, we weren't able to, unfortunately, run through the G Hub software linked to this mouse, so I thought we'd make a quick video now just to go through the different options that you do have on the G502X Lightspeed inside of G Hub. So when you first open the G Hub software, you're greeted with this tile here, which corresponds to the mouse that I'm actually using. If you did have a Logitech keyboard or headset or any other peripheral, then they would show up here as well. Bit of information on here, you've got your battery level, says 129 hours remaining, which is huge. Uh, connection light speed because I'm using the light speed dongle and down here you've got onboard memory mode that you can toggle on and off and then you can go into the device settings as well so if we actually jump into the to the device you've got two panels here the first being the sensitivity DPI speeds so I've got mine set to at the moment 400 800 and 600 but you can change that down here depending on what you want to use and you can also add more options as well that you can cycle through so you've got uh, you can only do a maximum of five speeds on there so you've then got the choice of setting that up how you want and if you want to get rid of it you just drag them off of that timeline sensitivity line um, and then it gets rid of the extra steps for you so let me just change that back down to what i usually have set and there you go now what i will say if i switch my camera back to my full size camera in my review i mentioned these two as mouse buttons in fact, they are the DPI changer. I assumed this middle one here was going to be the DPI changer, but by default, it's not. You have to manually set that, and I will go through that now. Uh, so if we jump back over to this screen, jump down to the assignments, so I can click that button there, and it gives me my assignments of my mouse. So as I was saying, as you can see, this is automatically set to DPI up. This is automatically set to DPI down which i don't mind too much i have manually set this button here which is this button just here to my dpi cycle and that will cycle through the various levels of dpi which i prefer to be honest with you but if you are someone who wants to just cycle up or just cycle down you can leave the default settings and then change the dpi up and dpi down here now you can assign different things to different keys as well so use the default which is the dpi up you can disable it or if you go over to here you've got all of your commands that you can set to that key different particular keys so the keys of the keyboard you can assign to there actions uh overwolf not sure what overwolf is but it looks like a video capture service i've never actually used it before You've got Discord settings in here, so if you want to deafen yourself, you can change that to there. That didn't work, so why can't I? Oh, maybe I can't. Oh, there you go. A little bit sensitive on there, but you uh, have to get that a little bit accurate. So the top, I could deafen myself on Discord, and the bottom, I could mute myself. So it's essentially turning off sound or turning off my microphone if I wanted to go with those buttons on the mouse. And then OBS. I've got OBS open at the moment on my other screen. I can save a buffer, uh, toggle desktop mute, toggle streaming, toggle recording. So if I want to quickly turn off my stream, I wouldn't personally stick turn off stream on one of your side buttons on your mouse because of accidental accidental misclicks. But uh, but yeah, you can if if that's a bit of you, then then so be it. You've also got macro options, so you can create new macros. Name this macro. Test macro. Uh, no repeat, repeat while holding, toggle, or a sequence of macros if you wanted to do that. So repeat while holding, start now, record keystrokes, text or emojis, action, launch application, system or delay. So you've got loads of different options on there as well. So if you wanted to put, I don't know, hello, welcome to the game, hello, at GG, something like that, then you can put some text in there as well. But uh uh, I'm not going to do that because I I don't usually use macros when I'm gaming, so there is that. 
um, but I'm sure there are people out there that do enjoy a macro depending on the type of game you're playing as well so moving on to system again add an application so you can use a button to launch an application uh, profile cycles G shift uh, battery level which you could assign to a button you can see down here as well you've got all of these buttons already assigned scroll left primary click is there uh, secondary click is over here so they have all been assigned pretty much as default so I mean maybe maybe if I did copy in there and paste in there g10 and g11 they're called hopefully now because they are assigned to copy and paste I can assign them inside of a game to do a particular action but uh, I haven't tested that yet actually let's do that now so I've just jumped into a quick game of Age of Empires. I've got the AI set on easy difficulty, see easy difficulty, so I'm not too worried about being attacked. But uh, as demonstrated in my uh, in the review video, if you're away from the map, I've got my return to town center or cycle through town center, should I actually call it, set to my mouse button four, which is this one down here so you can press that and then you can go back to a particular town center now one thing i did want to try if i select my villagers as an example you've got this down here which is seek shelter which is orders the villager to automatically seek shelter in the nearest garrisonable building so that means if i'm under attack by someone and i want to save my villagers i can click g on the keyboard and then that will automatically send any of the villagers or whatever units to a garrisonable building um, to essentially try and save them. But I would like to potentially stick that on whatever this one was, mouse button 10 or 11 up here. So I've done that. If I select my villager now, that says control C. Let's make her go over here. And then if I click this button, she should go and garrison back into the town center so there you go there is just a quick look into the g hub for the 502x light speed you've also got a load of presets here as well depending on what you're doing so you have got an age of empires preset here or age of empires 4 preset if you play overwatch you got that stardew valley the ascent valheim f122 lego star wars v rising there are quite a few games on here guild wars 2 far cry 6 that you can choose from uh, and then you can also you've got the onboard memory as well if you want to create your own profiles um depending on what games you play again if you've got a particular setup you want because of a game then you can do that so with all of that in mind thank you very much for checking out this video i know it was very very basic but i thought we'd make it clear on what the g hub software can do if you are using the G502X Lightspeed because we couldn't cover it in our review because uh, the software wasn't available at that time. But uh, if you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to keep up with our latest tech and gaming videos. And also, again, let us know in the comments down below if the G502X Lightspeed or the Plus or the standard wired version is something you're upgrading to uh, or something you're, you're moving into fresh from another brand. As I say, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.